Here you can see the finished x-axis motor along with this GT2 pulley, the Delrin Acme nut holding it in place, and over here you can see what it looks like from the top. There's two little screws holding it down here on this little hook of the frame and two screws holding it through this Delrin block here. There's a lot of steps involved to this. You need one stepper motor, one GT2 pulley, two M3 set screws, thread locker blue, this spacer will be repurposed for this step, although it's intended for configuring the auto-leveling probe, or also called the induction sensor. We also need two M3 6mm screws, one M3 30mm screw, one plastite screw, and the Delrin Acme nut. If your motor isn't labeled already, go ahead and mark it with a letter X for our X-axis motor. I've already attached the set screws into the GT2 pulley, but I've only attached them lightly. I haven't tightened them all the way. I can still see clear through the center hole here so that it fits on top of the motor shaft. When I place this on top of the motor shaft, I want this larger end to be on top, and I want one of the set screws to line up with the flat side of the motor shaft. So all I need to do is just slide that in place. So here you can see I have the set screw lined up with the flat side of the motor shaft. The tough question here is how high should this pulley be placed on the motor shaft? Well, it turns out I did a little bit of research to make sure I could find out the perfect height to place this pulley. I installed the Delrin idler pulley first so I could compare the depth. And before finalizing the motor pulley height, I attached the x-axis motor through the Delrin block that squares up the frame. Then I compared the depth of the motor pulley and the idler. I draped the GT2 belt across the two pulleys and measured the distance from the frame to the belt. I had to check that the left side and the right side were equal measurements. After a couple tests, I found a height where both measurements were the same. It turns out that ideal height is the same thickness as the spacer that came in the kit to set up the auto-leveling probe. Press it flat, perpendicular to the motor shaft, and then press down the pulley till it holds that piece in place. Take the Allen wrench and tighten one of the set screws, preferably the one touching the flat side of the motor shaft. That'll hold the pulley in place so I can remove the spacer. Now that I have that lined up, I'm ready to start applying thread locker. So I apply it to the first set screw that I haven't tightened all the way, and then tighten that in place. Then I'm going to turn it so that I can reach the other set screw, loosen that set screw, apply the thread locker, and tighten it in place. Position the motor like a diamond with the wire shooting out to the bottom left. It's going to connect to these three holes, particularly we're going to start with these two holes first. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to flip this over and make sure this thicker end is down towards the bottom. Cap this on top and line up those screw holes. These are going to take an M3 6mm screw, kind of get your fingers in there, twist it in place, and then tighten them with an Allen wrench. As usual with motors, tighten it till it's snug and firm. Don't over tighten it at risk of ripping out the threads in the motor. The last screw for the x-axis motor passes through this little block of Delrin here. This is considered the Acme nut because the threaded rod goes through this opening here. This slides in right here and we're going to feed a screw from the outside of this plate through this piece into the motor. And that opening is right there. See that wide open that goes all the way through? This other spot is for a plastite screw. So I'm going to show you where those go. I'm going to feed that 30 millimeter screw right through here. It's going to pass all the way through to the motor. And the plastite screw is just going to help secure that Delrin block in place. So let's get those installed. Once you finish tightening these two screws, the Delrin block will be in here very secure. You may have seen some air pockets between the Delrin block and the frame when you first started tightening those screws. Those should be completely gone. Again, it's very firm and very strong. If it feels secure, you're ready to move on.